Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our webinar on uh, full stack development. So we're going to take a, a look today at uh, cool things like TypeScript and Angular from, yes, the comfort of your IDE. Uh, I am Tim Webb. I'll be uh, your slide um, faculty. We'll talk about introductions in a moment. Uh, we have uh, a quick agenda, we'll just do a tiny bit of introduction about full stack, uh, but today is all about the demos, uh, all about seeing how you actually move from JavaScript to say TypeScript, as well as how you can introduce Angular into your Java EE stack. So promise you, we won't bore you with slides. Let's get into the good technical stuff. Uh, during the webinar, um, do have Brian Fernandez who heads up our IDE side, uh, technical guru able to help answer questions in the questions area into in the go to webinar area so please don't hesitate to drop questions there or in the chat uh, we will mention very briefly a couple products we do here at genua tech that can help you along the way though by no means do you need to use anything that we provide to be able to use these uh these cool technologies so uh, i am tim webb i am uh, an expat living down here in guadalajara mexico been doing software for, for many years, had a, a basically just shy of a decade at Cisco Systems, and now I'm just coming up to 10 years at, uh, at Genua Tech. Um, a lot of different technologies over the years from network routers to Eclipse Committer to uh, now VP over here at Genua Tech. And we also have uh, Piotr with us. So Piotr, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Piotr uh, Tomek and I uh, live in uh, Poland, in Bielsko Biała. And uh, I've been working with Genuitech for over six years. And uh, yeah, recently um, I've enjoyed uh, coding a lot in TypeScript as well as uh, good old Java. And uh, I'll be leading uh, demonstrations today. So I hope you will enjoy them. Outstanding, thank you, Peter. So uh, real quick, uh, who are we, why are, you, why, why are you here talking to us or listening to us, I should say, and hopefully throwing in some good questions and curveballs along the way. Uh, we've been doing this for a while. Uh, Genua Tech was founded in 97, uh, though our product portfolio really started in the early 2000s. Uh, you may have heard of products like My Eclipse over the years. Uh, obviously things have evolved a lot and that's required Genua Tech to evolve. And along the way, our principle has really been high value, low cost solutions. So, uh, yes, you could go to get a, a multi-thousand dollar stack from uh, some large blue company, yet you could get a very efficient one from us. Uh, something unique about us, it's always fun to include a little anecdote, is we were virtual before it was cool. Uh, we're a 100% virtual company, which means, yes, I could come live down here in Guadalajara, Mexico, uh, where my wife, my wife is from, and bring our daughters down here and get that personal element. Um, but uh, we really, by being virtual, it allowed us to uh, really understand what it's like to build software across uh, organizations that span the globe. Uh, everything from time zone challenges to actually just latency of connections between people collaborating together. Uh, a lot of companies use our software, all that's great. So what are we really here to talk about though? Not, not Genua Tech being a fun company, but the stack, right? The stack we use in the enterprise and how hopefully you're able to begin to adopt new technologies into your stack to be more productive. Uh, this full stack shifts. Yes, yeah, somebody will say full stack is PHP with some sort of cool jQuery front end running in the browser. Uh, the full stack we're talking about today is really sort of an Angular TypeScript sort of front end on top of really any back end for the purposes of today's talk. Uh, you will see a little bit of Java E, though everything we're talking about today you could do on top of PHP, Node, or anything else, anything else you may like. So uh, adopting the stack for Java teams. Yes, we have a little bit of a Java bias as many enterprises have a lot of Java developers. I'm sure many of you here want to be able to get more done. Um, and Angular is a really interesting technology. TypeScript is an interesting technology and we'll highlight some of those things. So what do we at Genua Tech want to allow you to do? Make it easier for those Java EE guys to blend in to be Angular full stack people. And of course, yes, exclusive front end web developers should be able to leverage the same sort of benefits as well. So let's get to our first story, moving from JavaScript to TypeScript. All right, yes, this is a bit of a, a mem rendition of what is JavaScript versus TypeScript. So this story is all about what benefits does TypeScript bring you as a developer, and then we'll move into how do those TypeScript benefits when you use something like Angular on top, 
make you even more productive. So the first one is, yes, by default, JavaScript is really easy to end up with this spaghetti code, the, the ugly, poorly wired uh, data center. And TypeScript, it makes it a lot easier to have this nicely organized, pretty code base. Yes, any smart developer can build pretty code with JavaScript, and any developer can make ugly code, even smart ones with TypeScript. Uh, but the reality is they're not that different as languages, right? JavaScript and TypeScript are not fundamentally different. If you look at these two things, yeah, they look similar. Um, I'm a Java guy by trade, but you know, do my TypeScript and JavaScript now. It wasn't hard to go from one to the other. Um, you look at the two, it's like, okay, sure, we have a different function or a prototype declaration instead of our class construct in TypeScript. Code looks similar, but why does it matter? That the differences are what allow for the fundamental benefits of TypeScript to you as a developer, to your team in the enterprise or large product. If you want to make production grade software, TypeScript has fundamental differences. So first off, having a structured language makes it easier in, in many ways. It means you can have editors that provide lots of smarts that help validate the code with a high level of confidence. It means you can have better uh, tool tips and things helping guide you in the programming. It has better ways of detecting whether parameters is, are even needed as we'll see in the demonstration in a moment. And of course, things like refactoring. Second part of course about TypeScript is it's really built for an enterprise class quality stack. So rich IDEs, good errors, dependency management, all of that. A um, lot of words, it comes down, down to predictability. You wanna build software, you wanna know you're gonna get a good product at the end of it. And we're about to dive into the demonstration, as I promised, we won't, we won't bore you with slides. So just before we do that demonstration, we have one quick poll. Just wanna take uh, 20 seconds, if you'll bear with us, to answer in the, in the GoToWebinar, um, Area, you should see a little pop-up. Um, and if you can go ahead and just quickly answer there, we'll just dive in and, and adjust our demo slightly based on your answers. Excellent, we're already at 75% have voted and going up quickly. Um, all right, we've hit 80%, so let's start to, let's talk talk about the answers. So uh, the answers uh, here, and let's see if I hit close poll, I think you can actually see the results. Um, or maybe not, shoot, I'll share results, there we go, sorry. Um, and so you can see a, real, a lot of people um, are doing some uh, JavaScript. Makes sense, right, why you're here. Um, some people are starting to browse into TypeScript and uh, or explore it, whatever else, and yes, Awesome, we already have 13% of the audience is using TypeScript all the time. Um, and so I can't wait to hear your, your questions and whatnot later as, as we move into the demonstration. So it's an exact match for what we're gonna cover today. Uh, so we're gonna pass it over now to Piotr to actually get into seeing stuff in action. So uh, Piotr, if you don't mind, let's, let's see it. Thanks, Tim. Uh, just let me change myself to a presenter. Ah, okay. Main screen. You should see my screen. Tim, can you see my screen? I was waiting to view, so I don't know if you've hit the start button. It's a slightly different from the go to menu. Ah, there is here. Okay. Thank you, now we see it. Here we go. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so for the first demo, uh, I want to, um, for the first demo I've prepared um, a migration from JavaScript to TypeScript, just to uh, present you how easy it is to migrate your legacy code uh, to TypeScript and, and start benefiting from uh, all those uh, goodies uh, Tim mentioned about. Uh, the demo uh, is being presented in uh, Angular ID uh, 2017 CI6, uh, which is uh, our ID especially optimized from uh, for modern web development around Angular ID, uh, around Angular, um, and we are uh, using uh, Dark as Dark theme to get some uh, nice uh, feeling. Um, in the demo, I will. Um, I have uh, prepared. I have taken from GitHub a an open source uh, gallery uh, engine uh, called PhotoSwipe, um, which uh, allows you to uh, which allows you to uh, swipe pictures uh, either with mouse or on a mobile device with uh, with your 
finger. Um, and uh, I will modify build system uh, to use TypeScript as a source. Uh, this is a, a JavaScript legacy, uh, it's a JavaScript code, so we will uh, move it uh, to, uh, to TypeScript. Um, then we will uh, fix some uh, initial set of errors on TypeScript files and uh, we'll convert uh, to use modern uh, build system. Uh, that would be, you know, uh, the first stage and then uh, you can incrementally uh, improve your uh, TypeScript project to be, uh, to have more typings, to be uh, better and better. Mm, so, uh, first of all, let's uh, migrate it to TypeScript. Um, here you can see I'm using a, a terminal class view. It's uh, it's a, a bash um, bash terminal uh, on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and in which you can configure uh, Node.js and npm versions, uh, as well as uh, you can choose whether to use uh, project local commands. So, for instance, uh, this project is using grant, and this grant is being served directly from your um, uh, from this uh, project. This allows you to have a nice separation uh, and uh, between projects, uh, so that you don't have to install any npm stuff globally. Um, okay, so uh, let's uh, uh, let's go to the source folder and let's uh, create the TypeScript source. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, I copy the stuff and now let's uh, rename it rename this is, uh, JSTS. okay so that should uh, have us uh, have all the files renamed and the last one we have to rename manually hmm Ah, okay, right. Uh, wrong uh, extension. This way. Uh, okay, so uh, right now we have uh, our TypeScript code uh, migrated from uh, JavaScript. That's as much as you need. Uh, just change extension to TS uh, because uh, TypeScript is a, a superset of JavaScript. And uh, let's um, add the tsconfig to this uh, project. Um, let's use ES5 as most of the browsers, all of the browsers support ES5 by now. And um, we have TypeScript config created. And now if we get into the file, uh, we see uh, quite a few errors, okay? Uh, so those are initial errors where uh, your JavaScript code is missing some types. Uh, some stuff is not that uh, uh, visible. So, uh, for instance, uh, here we can see that supplied parameters do not match any signature of call target. And uh, if we uh, if we go to the extend method, we see that extend method has three parameters. So, you know, uh, we should mark the third parameter is optional. Uh, that's the cool stuff about uh, TypeScript that. Uh, it's very verbose about uh, documenting your code and it enforces it on compiler level. So not only types, but also stuff like uh, optional parameters, um, which works for both uh, API consumers and API providers, because if you expose uh, prevent override with uh, optional uh, symbol, uh, then you know that within the method, you have to ensure that prevent override is defined. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, now, before we go further, uh, let's configure the build system. Okay, before we go uh, into more uh, into fixing more errors. So um, we want to change existing build as little as possible. Uh, that would be by uh, transpiling our existing TypeScript code to place where our current JavaScript code exists. So let me uh, configure uh, TypeScript build. Uh, build path and uh, we will automatically compile uh, files to src.js. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the builder has run. You can see that the files got changed. And now, uh, oh, come on, um, let's see what has changed in our, for instance, core.js file, uh, which was just copied. 
uh, and renamed TypeScript. So if we uh, disable um, white space changes, you can see that it's all about line breaks and uh, a different, uh, it's, it's all formatting changes. So uh, our TypeScript code has been transpiled to JavaScript code without any logical changes. So, um, so you don't have to change your code for it to be uh, TypeScript compatible. Now, the next part is to uh, change your build system. So um, I'll uh, skip this. Uh, I, I'm sorry, not skip, but I will uh, speed it by uh, checking out the commit where I uh, already have it configured. And uh, what I did is uh, in uh, grant file, um, I've, added a new, uh, I've added a new task, TS, uh, which would um, transpile the sources using our TS config JSON. And uh, this uh, TS task uh, has been uh, registered before uh, other uh, build tasks. So uh, there is a very minimal change to the build and all the legacy builds uh, structure is consuming J JavaScript sources from JS folder as it had before. Um, so now we're uh, ready to uh, to change uh, initial uh, to fix initial errors. Um, um, I won't be changing all of them, just uh, just one uh, one more. Um, the errors cannot find name options. So uh, in this scope, uh, options is not defined. Uh, now, when you uh, when you have uh, JavaScript code, and especially if you have it in in some uh, very uh, uh, weird build systems, uh, it might be uh, happening that your variables are provided uh, to the file um, are wrapped in functions or, or or something like that. And this is the case uh, with this uh, with this uh, library. And uh, I can. Uh, actually instruct TypeScript that a variable template uh, is, um, is available uh, here to, um, on the command line, uh, sorry, uh, in the scope. And I will do the same for others. So uh, UI class and uh, items. And now um, TypeScript will know that uh, those are valid variables and it won't complain about them being not present. Here you can see uh, that uh, it's it's like that. Um, another thing about uh, uh, worth mentioning about TypeScript is that a content assist is accurate. So um, you have a full uh, typing, and if your types are uh, present, and uh, a lot of types um, TypeScript uh, infers itself. Um, you will get a, a very, very good uh, content assist, including types um, and uh, optional parameters and stuff like that. So um, there are quite a few other errors to fix. All of those are typing errors. So uh, some type is not defined, um, uh, stuff like that. So let me, um, it, it takes around uh, 15 to 20 minutes to fix initial a set of errors on this uh, on this file. Uh, so let me uh, skip to that uh, when where the errors are fixed. Okay. Um, so now uh, so now the errors are fixed, and uh, and I've added a new file types ts. And uh, in this file, I defined all the um, interfaces. They can be defined uh, in the place uh, where where uh, in the place where they are used for the first time, or in types, um, I prefer uh, in such of, uh, in case of flat projects to use a separate file for uh, for this. Uh, this project is not modularized. Um, and uh, what is cool about uh, this is that um, by just creating an uh, an interface type, you're documenting your code, right? So you know what your uh, API consumers will uh, will use. Uh, can use like that uh, this stuff is public and available to consumers and that if anything changes here you have to update your documentation and um, uh, TypeScript is using Javadoc uh, so it's it's aware of Javadoc um, JSDoc sorry uh, so uh, if you add appropriate uh, comments uh, you will get uh, the um, documentation as well here 
um, including like uh, parameters explanation, uh, quite a few options uh, available here. Um, okay, so uh, there was quite a few changes to, 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 to add. Uh, there were mostly uh, types, uh, only types. And, but uh, still, if you look at the file, um, some of the uh, variables uh, are not typed yet. And uh, TypeScript is not complaining about those because um, he is assuming that uh, they are of type uh, any, so you can do anything on them. Uh, no assumption by uh, by TypeScript of uh, their contents. And uh, the next stage is to add the, um, is to add types for all of them. Um, so uh, let me turn on uh, one particular compiler setting. Uh, it, no implicit any, and this is the uh, setting in TS config. And uh, it will um, throw an error whenever uh, TypeScript is assuming an any type. Uh, this is the uh, mode in which you improve your code, add more typings to your code. And uh, at any time, um, you can uh, push your code to others uh, and uh, revert that setting. So, um, so this can be gradually uh, improved. Okay, you can see that uh, when I add types, uh, errors are uh, gone. And now uh, I can uh, go back and uh, remove that, uh, that preference and uh, remove that compiler option and uh, the errors are uh, gone. So uh, this is how you uh, gradually improve your code. Uh, let me check out uh, this commit. Uh, so I spent I've spent around two hours on uh, adding uh, types, and uh, there's an interesting thing uh, which came out uh, of of this. Um, so basically, if your code had some uh, spelling mistakes uh, or um, some typing problems, or like you're um, assigning a, a variable of different type to a variable of different type, those things you will see at this stage. Um, and uh, for instance, in this project, um, when I was defining uh, properties of interfaces, I was defining them only when they were assigned, not when they were read, so only on set. And it turned out that uh, transform property is never set. Uh, maybe it's some uh, legacy code, uh, some, some old code, which got partially removed, but in some places it stayed. So. Uh, this really helps you uh, to moving your JavaScript code to TypeScript really helps you maintaining your project. Uh, it makes it easier. And uh, you can do it uh, with uh, any type of uh, build system. And uh, with um, some of Maven plugins, you can even uh, add the uh, TypeScript to your Java EE projects where you have this transpilation phase uh, added uh, in uh, Maven frontend plugin through Maven frontend plugin. So um, that's, uh, that's basically it. Uh, there was one uh, part I have skipped, uh, convert to use modern build systems. Um, I will just uh, quickly go through it with, uh, by, by showing you uh, the commit. So I've, uh, moved it, uh, I've moved the project to use Browserify. Um, and uh, basically that uh, resulted in uh, adding another step and uh, getting rid of one of the steps. Uh, so, uh, this uh, this allowed to remove some uh, very peculiar stuff like uh, the um, prefixes to the file so that it works with different module uh, systems, uh, one of the files. And uh, with that, I will finish uh, this, uh, uh, this presentation and I will pass it over to Tim. Awesome, thank you. Now, I think it's interesting how as you went through that exercise of converting that open source project, uh, you were able to find actual bugs in that library um, or obsolete code as it were. Uh, so I think you should be able to see my window again now. Um, so thank you Peter, for taking us through that. Um, and so, yeah, you know, moving to TypeScript has a lot of value as we see. It gives better quality of code. And so if you're a Java developer on the call and you're saying, man, you know, that JavaScript code I was just looking at is a complete mess, uh, you're right. 
the great thing about typing with TypeScript code from the beginning or working with TypeScript is you get all that validation, you get strong typing, uh, you get that strongly typed language like you're used to in Java with TypeScript. Uh, if you do need to migrate, you know, there's a few simple steps you would follow. You're going to make sure your framework is compatible. You're going to add transpilation like we saw. Pick up typings. Typings are essentially bindings of a lot of, or you can make your own typings, but bindings for different libraries you may use so you get better things like content assistive validation. And eventually just incrementally migrate. Like we saw on today's demo, there was a few steps we went through. No, we, no re need to do them all at once. Uh, so TypeScript in short, yes, major organizations. We see people like Microsoft and Google backing it very heavily. Um, we see it's a great language for building in the enterprise for production grade applications. Uh, I really like this, uh, this synopsis from the uh, uh, Slack guys, uh, TypeScript to Slack or how I learned to stop worrying and trust the compiler. That's really what it's all about for us, right? Is we wanna be able to, as a developer, develop, focus on the code, not spend a lot of time dealing with, you know, the, the proverbial memory cleanup in C or the clean code that you get. You wanna just build focus on objects, APIs, writing what you need. All right, so we've got TypeScript. How about we dive into the next part of the webinar, our Angular story, so yes, Angular is really cool. You're hearing lots of people talk about it right now. Why are they talking about it? Why do people care about Angular? It's different, right? It's not just like when people were talking about jQuery some years back. Angular is a framework. Um, and yes, like all things, there's different, you know, religious biases, if you will. Uh, somebody said, well, react to this or whatever else that. Uh, the difference with Angular is it's a framework, very much like what you get with Java EE and the like, in that it provides a paradigm for development. It provides a set of building blocks to build a well-structured application. It's optimized to be able to run across a lot of different browsers, mobile, responsive, whatever else it may be. Ultimately, it enforces you to help build a maintainable application so that other people in your company or your team, as they come over to work with you on the project, can sit down and start coding. Uh, and again, because it's built on TypeScript and everything else, yes, it allows you to get first class tooling. So traditional enterprise applications, um, really a lot of uh, other applications that fall in this picture as well, of course. Um, but you get a lot of smarts on the server. Your application is really running on the server in many ways. Yes, maybe you get some creative with some uh, session variables or whatever else, but the smarts are on the server predominantly. Um, you have your server layer, your framework, your application, and it's a mess, let's be honest. There's really blurry lines and is Spring Security a application level framework server? Eh, doesn't really matter for this picture. What we wanna talk about is how you can add smarts into the browser, right? And that's where Angular comes into play. So this demo we're about to see shows about how you can actually build out your Angular application on top of your current framework. So you don't have to reboot your entire business logic layer you have in your, in your, in your product. Um, you can actually put a new face on top of it. So for that demonstration, I'm just going to do a quick poll as we like to kind of get a vibe of um, a vibe of the audience. So I'm going to spin up one more poll that you should be able to see right now. If you can please just take a moment to to answer. to say you're a very responsive audience. We've already hit 75% votes, 77. We'll stop when we hit 80%. There we go, 80%. Um, thank you so much. I know a couple of you didn't have a chance to vote yet and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close it and keep the webinar moving forward, but thank you for all being so attentive. Um, so if you look at the numbers, it's a good spread, right? Um, some of you new to Angular, you can come see about it today. You're starting to read about it. It's all over the, the blogosphere right now. Uh, beginning to play with it. That's where we see a lot of people, uh, pilot projects, kind of experimenting with it. Really awesome to see some people in production. Um, especially AngularJS has been around a while, number of things in production as well. Um, in this particular instance, we're going to be focusing on the second generation of Angular, which was known as Angular 2, and forevermore shall be just known as Angular. So I'm going to go ahead and hide those results so we can focus back on, back on the slides. So, Piotr, so 
we got only a couple people actually in production, or I should say a couple people, a couple dozen people uh, in production. Uh, why don't you take us through and show the rest of us what it's like to actually build up an Angular app? Sure. Um, let me start uh, showing my screen. Okay. Mm. So uh, the second uh, demo will be about adding uh, Angular to your Java EE stack. Um, so uh, as, a, as an example application, I, I, I will be using a pet store application. Maybe some of you uh, are already familiar with it. Uh, but before I dive into, uh, into adding Angular to it, uh, I will um, kind of uh, explore uh, and show how uh, a fully fledged Angular application looks like. Um, uh, so uh, I found this Angular YouTube browser on GitHub. It's a pretty cool um, player, and uh, I'll just uh, start it from uh, from uh, my IDE and uh, get it running. So for Java E, uh, I'm using uh, my Eclipse. Um, because it has uh, an optimized uh, Java E tooling, um, and uh, well, that's that's the main uh, that's the main reason you you would like to to, to use my Eclipse, uh, and it includes all the uh, modern web technologies uh, present in uh, Angular ID. Um, you can see Webpack building uh, the application. Um, so uh, with Angular. Uh, we have a uh, we have a um, very uh, good support for uh, for um, for uh, Angular CLI applications, and uh, uh, those are uh, applications which uh, mm, excuse me, I'm having troubles finding my. Oh, okay. Um, so those are applications uh, which are created with Angular CLI. Uh, Angular CLI is kind of a wrapper around uh, Angular, which uh, helps you uh, build application with uh, Webpack and uh, provide uh, pre-configured uh, TSLint and uh, Jasmine and other uh, stuff for testing and uh, uh, and dev work. And uh, we provide a, a, a support for uh, running a server from Angular CLI. Uh, this is uh, started here. And uh, let me uh, start debug uh, mode with uh, Ecos Player. And that's the name of the, the application. Um, so Angular applications are uh, single page uh, applications. Everything is uh, happening without reloading the page itself. Uh, so it's all dynamic content. Uh, being uh, dynamically loaded from uh, from the uh, from the internet, uh, you can see like uh, when the list of uh, videos is is being refreshed, uh, you have a nice uh, progress uh, dialog. And Angular applications are built of modules and components. Um, modules uh, group components together. And uh, your application has to be a module as well, and you have to have a like a, a bootstrap component, uh, the first, uh, the first one, and uh, everything else is just um, uh, component, including component uh, in a in a nice hierarchy. Uh, with Angular ID and my clips and uh, web clips, uh, you will get this nice addition to to your application if you run it from from the ID. Uh, this allows you to uh, quickly find out uh, which component uh, the co content uh, belongs to. Uh, this, you know, it's uh, really uh, helpful when you have to fix a bug uh, in a component or you're working on someone else's um, uh, project and, uh, and you need to explore it and then learn which component is, is, pro is, um, is uh, providing this part. So um, with this, you can, uh, see the components hierarchy, but you can also uh, navigate directly to the components template. Uh, and uh, what I would like to do is I would like to change add text to added me. So uh, the HTML file has been opened in, uh, in ID, and uh, I quickly find uh, the added uh, text, and I can uh, change it. Uh, you can see that uh, Webpack um, is automatically rebuilding incrementally uh, the project. 
And uh, once uh, the rebuild is done, the uh, website um, uh, refreshes and uh, admin is here. So that's uh, as uh, that's as simple as that uh, to uh, work uh, with uh, with Angular applications. Now uh, let's move to um, creating a real uh, Angular application for our uh, Java e backend. So the next part will be uh, about that. We'll create an Angular project. Uh, we'll uh, generate TypeScript bindings for our JAXRS, uh, JAXRS uh, APIs. And uh, we'll create a component which uses the API. Uh, in the end, we'll style, uh, style our application. So uh, first, the application will look really ugly. Okay, It's going to be just the structure. And after uh, having uh, logic working, we will add a bootstrap to the application. Mm. OK, so, um, so you would create a um, new Angular project using uh, a wizard, uh, which will, uh, um, which will uh, use uh, Angular CLI uh, to uh, scaffold your project. Uh, you can choose uh, different Angular CLI versions. Uh, and uh, I'll just uh, let it run in the terminal. Mm. But it will take a little bit of time to, to install. There is a lot of uh, node module dependencies to, to, to download, so it takes around five minutes uh, to, uh, to create such a project. Uh, so uh, to, to speed it up, I have created the project already and added some uh, some components. So uh, let me show you how uh, how it works. Mm. This is also an Angular CLI project. Uh, the main uh, component is uh, app component. Mm. Components in Angular are specified uh, with at annotations. It's decoration actually. Um, it's not as strict as uh, annotation in in, uh, in Java, mm. and uh, you basically have to st specify a template either through external template or uh, through a template string, and uh, add some stylings which will be uh, local to the component, private to the component. Mm. Then in the uh, uh, then in the uh, HTML file. Uh, you specify uh, subcomponents. This is another component, and uh, normal HTML markup. Uh, the project is almost built. Mm, okay, so let's uh, start it. Mm -hmm. ah. Already here. Okay, so right now it's just loading categories and uh, nothing else happens. Um, what I did is I've uh, um, in our uh, in uh, the pet store application I've uh, used um, uh, Swagger to create a description of JaxRS services and uh, then um, I've uh, used a Swagger code generator to generate um, REST bindings on um, on TypeScript side. Uh, let's see how it were, how it looks, um, how REST services are exposed in Petstore application. Uh, there are six endpoints, uh, five endpoints uh, for product, item, customer, country, and category. Uh, the REST application, uh, in which I've added um, configuration for Swagger. Uh, so that it can uh, read uh, endpoints and expose them uh, in the application. And I've added a course filter, which um, allows uh, cross-origin access from uh, localhost uh, 4200, on which Angular IDE frontend works. So basically, uh, with Angular uh, I, applications, uh, the, the easiest setup is that Angular application runs on a separate server than your uh, Java EE backend, which exposes JAXRS services. Um, however, Angular is 
a static content. Everything is built into the static content. It's static JS, static HTML, static CSS. So uh, you can actually serve it from any server. Let it be Apache or Tomcat or uh, WebSphere, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, okay, so um, um, so this is the uh, this is the Pesto application I was talking about. It is, you know, if you get uh, into it, it has a lot of uh, uh, features. Uh, but we will be interested in just um, uh, you doing the categories and products for categories uh, for this presentation. Um, the categories are already done. Um, so uh, let's uh, do the products. Uh, no. So I will have to add uh, one more component. Uh, if you if you hover over it, you can see that this is category list component, and uh, it's uh, from it's a, a child of our component. Mm, so let's create a new uh, component. Uh, it will be product list. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm finished. Um, the component generation is run by Angular CLI. Angular CLI has a lot of uh, nice stuff in it, and uh, amongst others, it supports, uh, for instance, uh, generating blueprints, uh, components, uh, services, and other uh, elements. Um, it has automatically registered our component uh, in uh, our main module. Here we can see it and uh, generated uh, a new folder uh, with CSS, HTML, test specifications and uh, adjustment and, uh, and the component itself. Um, so what we want to do is we want to use uh, Angular's uh, embedded router uh, to, um, to, show, uh, comp uh, to show in the particular, in our category list component, uh, um, sorry, in our product list component, products for a particular category. So we will bind the category slash and here number uh, to this component. This is how um, uh, router works. And, uh, and uh, binding um, uh, router is uh, relatively simple like this. And uh, the router outlet goes here. So everything from uh, the router will will be uh, emitted within this uh, router outlet element. Um, okay, so our product list uh, component uh, needs to um, expose some uh, products. Uh, okay, and uh, you can see that in the rest package, um, I, have, uh, um, I have all the uh, objects and uh, um, endpoints um, defined already. So I can, uh, s uh, they were generated automatically. I had to do a little bit of uh, fixing uh, in the API package, uh, but uh, uh, overall uh, there was a very little stuff to do and uh, accesses to all endpoints were, were uh, quite smoothly generated by Swagger. Um, to uh, read uh, products from our JAXRS services, I uh, need uh, to have um, um, products uh, API uh, that will be this one. Okay. Um, Angular works with dependency injection. So if I specify a, a, a parameter here, it will uh, inject uh, the product uh, API. Uh, from uh, the, uh, with dependency injection. Um, now on ng init, um, what I will do is I will call uh, products API and uh, list all. Unfortunately, the endpoint doesn't provide you, uh, doesn't allow you to query per product, so we have to list them all. And uh, so and subscribe and the value will be assigned to products okay and uh, you know with type script is I if I uh, do the spelling mistake it's immediately um, underlined uh, and and shown to me that you know values doesn't exist in the scope 
So uh, it really helps, uh, it really uh, imp saves you a lot of time. Um, okay, so I have products, I have everything here. Now um, we need to show it. So uh, let's get to the HTML file and uh, you know, show um, mg if and if. Uh, hmm? Okay, and if a product uh, length is uh, zero, uh, then we will show loading. And uh, if not, uh, we will show uh, the list of products. Um, okay, length uh, or greater than zero. And now for uh, each item, um, I will do ng4 let product of products. And uh, within li, uh, I will use product dot, um, dot name. Okay, for now, we'll just list uh, product names. Mm, okay. That's it. And uh, one last change because we're changing, we're checking the uh, length uh, from products. The products cannot be uh, null. So let's assign something to them. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, let's see. It's all compiled. Uh, and it doesn't work. So I had to do something. Um, incorrect here. Uh, did I specify the router? Well, at least. Hmm. Okay, I don't have uh, a lot of time uh, on the demo to uh, debug the problem. Uh, let me uh, uh, check out the commit in which uh, it works. Mm. Uh, just a second, let's wait for uh, for webpack to be built. Okay, and reload. Okay, so it works. Uh, let me show you. Uh, ah, okay, that's, uh, that's the commit with already uh, everything uh, added. Um, so basically, um, we subscribe to the list. Uh, and uh, one more thing added here is the root. Um, so uh, I react to, uh, to root parameters and subscribe, uh, subscribe to the changes and extract ID parameter, which I specified uh, before. And uh, then I filter products by category uh, to show only uh, filters by, of particular category. And in, uh, and in HTML file, uh, we have this uh, uh, loading thing as it used, uh, as, it, uh, as I wrote before. Uh, now, uh, with this, we have... Really good, Piotr. I think there's, um, you know, there, there's so much there, and I think it's exciting in, in Angular um, how much you can accomplish. And uh, I know there's quite a bit more we can show. Um, well, actually, the last thing uh, is styling, so... Uh, let me just uh, check out the commit and show you how um, how the application uh, styled application looks like. Uh, that's with uh, Bootstrap superhero theme. Great. So mm -hmm. as you bring that up, um, while what will uh, in in lieu of time, we can kind of see the steps that Piotr is going through, and and I, I won't bring up the slides just yet, so you can see see that come up momentarily. Um, but what's interesting about Angular as a platform is you saw how components were made. You were able to see uh, kind of the nice server integration. There's a pipeline for how your application actually runs. There is a um, a structure to the language where you saw how kind of include or setting up the routes or including the the web service or in this case using Swagger to generate the TypeScript bindings for the JAXRS web services provide a nice way to span the different tiers in your applications. Uh, and that's really the power of, of all of these languages of coupling TypeScript with you know, Angular as a framework is you're able to build really interesting dynamic applications. Uh, in this case, a single page application where 
um, most of the clicks uh, Peter will do in the browser won't even cause the page to reload. In that case, it was a little different as it was clicking around through different categories. But you see the whole UI is updating real time right inside the browser. And that is the, the power of what we're talking about. So I'm going to go over and take over uh, mm -hmm. being the presenter again here. Um, so uh, we saw different steps to adopt about how you can use Angular. Uh, there's a lot of applications you can make with it. Uh, there are, um, you know, everything from music libraries to dashboards, uh, really cool templates you can build on top of. Um, lots of interesting things with Angular. Um, would love to hear from some of you on this webinar uh, later uh, about the sort of things you're building. Um, so uh, we just have a couple more minutes left. So real quick, if you do want to dive into it, we have a product, Angular IDE. Uh, it's freemium. You can use it a number of days every month for free without paying anything. So if you just want to play with Angular, it's a great way to start uh, with it. You can grab it over at genuatech.com. Um, the couple other products you can use, like My Eclipse and Web Clips. Uh, I know some of you on the call today are already Web Clips users uh, based on uh, some of the questions that have come in. Um, we will address questions uh, in a moment. Uh, we'll share a recording of this as well. Um, and so just kind of in summary, web development, what sort of things do you want to have in your tool stack to be able to be effective as a TypeScript and Angular development? Of course, you're going to need Angular support. You want template support, build uh, server runtime. You want to be able to do TypeScript and Angular, of course. Uh, yes, develop node. And finally, of course, do debugging along the way. Uh, we do have other products at Genuatech. I won't bore you with those, uh, but some really cool things for Java EE development as well with interesting technologies like Live Preview, uh, an enhanced version of Code Live like we saw. A lot of development aids, um, and we'll get to the Q&A section in just a moment, like um, Code Live uh, allows you to see changes. The dark theme you saw today, if you use Eclipse, you can make it cool looking. Um, and of course, everything we have is is very easy to adopt. Um, so all of our software is available. Uh, most of the software is under a 30-day trial. Uh, Web Clips and Angular IDE are under a freemium model where you can use it for eight days a month, any eight days you choose, um, and very affordable after that, like $29 for a license. So all our software we do here at Genua Tech is very, very affordable. Um, ultimately, it's all turnkey, easy adoption. Pick it up, try it, try to put a bit of Angular IDE on top of your uh, your 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 tool stack today. Um, so with that, I know we've had a few questions. Um, one was uh, whether or not in My Eclipse Blue uh, do you have access to th these Angular ID and TypeScript tooling? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, in the My Eclipse 2017 uh, product family, the uh, Angular ID and TypeScript technologies are all supported as part of that stream. So you can absolutely uh, update to be able to use that. Uh, another question uh, about whether or not the there will be a recording today, and I apologize for not mentioning that at the start of the call. Uh, yes, we'll share a recording of uh, today's webinar as well. And um, for the source code, uh, which is a very interesting question as well, absolutely. Um, and uh, we have a GitHub repo that has the source code. And um, if you don't mind, uh, Piotr, putting into the chat a link to it. Uh, if you would be so kind, uh, all that source code is available, including the different checkout points. Um, uh, I know it, I believe both are on, on GitHub. Uh, if not, we can certainly do that after the call. We had another question um, about, is there a way to build uh, Angular inside a Java project? Um, and there's different parts to that. There are ways you can actually run like that ng serve command we saw where the we are running it you can do an ng build which essentially compiles the angular application into uh html and javascript kind of low level files and you can actually add those right to your java ee application or right inside your java project uh, and absolutely run them alongside so running kind of an ng build and then deploy with your java app um, the second part of that is some companies or some people do choose to run the Angular app as a different layer on the server uh, and then just use web services to their other Java EE project. And so both are certainly viable for you to, to do. Uh, thank you, Brian, for sharing that uh, GitHub URL for the Pet Store app inside the, uh, the chat window.
Let's see. Um, currently, I'm compiling Angular separately and copying the disk folder to the resources. Um, yeah, and, and that absolutely. Uh, sorry, I didn't see your your follow on. Um, uh, that's a perfectly valid way to do it. There are ways to add it to the build pipeline that are a bit more complex, but uh, if you want, we can certainly follow up with you offline to talk a bit more, but that's that's a bit more of a technical question about how to automate the, the build process, uh, but very much so. You can you can fully have your, your kind of deploy action on your Java E, do all the assembly and build as well. Um, now, uh, is it possible to learn Angular without any background of JavaScript? Uh, Piotr, maybe you want to take that one. I feel like I've been running through the questions pretty quick. You want to take that? Yeah, sure. So uh, the answer is uh, you need to know a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, but um, for a Java developer, um, learning TypeScript is kind of easier than learning JavaScript. Um, here at Genuitech, uh, some of us had to, tr had to move from JavaScript Java to also TypeScript because uh, a lot of the stuff you have seen has been written in TypeScript. So uh, we had to learn TypeScript, and I have to say it wasn't a pain. It wasn't a painful uh, experience. It was rather good. And uh, however, uh, TypeScript being a superset of JavaScript, you still have to know uh, the JavaScript syntax and uh, uh, some uh, some things. So. Um, I guess it's possible, but you have to learn a little bit of JavaScript on the way as well. Yeah, and I think as you put up, Yoder, I think that the key difference is because you're using TypeScript for most of it, it's a lot more natural. Uh, when, when you say learn JavaScript, you, you need to learn a little bit of the JavaScript language syntax. What you don't have to do is learn how to do crazy stuff with jQuery or a lot of those other J uh, JavaScript libraries that can be quite overwhelming for somebody who's not an expert in that space. The sort of JavaScript and TypeScript program you're doing is, is much more straightforward um, and, as Peter said, much less surprising. Yeah, um, and actually it's much easier to learn JavaScript with TypeScript because you have a good content assist. You have a structured language and you immediately know what is available on a particular method, field, function, what you have to pass. With JavaScript, it was always, you know, Googling out how this and that method behaves, right? That's exactly right. Um, we have another question. Do we need to add Angular CLI as a dependency on higher environments or NPM build is all I need? Uh, and that really depends on what level of kind of tooling, support, and automation you want. So uh, our products, for instance, you can do TypeScript and Angular development without using Angular CLI. Uh, however, we do have certain things like generator wizards and the servers view integration you saw that do use Angular CLI as part of that process. So for, for our tools at Genuitech, we do further optimize when you're using Angular CLI, but there's no requirement for you to develop with Angular or even use some of our, uh, a lot of our tool capability to add Angular CLI. That's more of a, a value add uh, in your development process. But uh, if, uh, uh, if you want to migrate to Angular CLI, it's best to create a fresh Angular CLI and uh, move your code there because it creates a lot of uh, configuration files uh, and a structure which it expects to be there. So, um, so it's not uh, migrating to Angular CLI is not as easy as adding a dependency to your uh, package JSON. All right, so I'm going through. Um... Can I use the same obfuscation techniques with TypeScript? Uh, that one I'll leave to you, Piotr, that's not an area I know. Yes, so basically since TypeScript transpires to JS, then your previous way you build your JavaScript code stays the same. So you can minify, uh, you can use anything you, ha you could use uh, on JavaScript uh, source. So uh, definitely yes. Perfect, so we're almost to the end here, um, coming up to our one hour. I wanna thank everyone for being a very responsive uh, attendance to have 
uh, over 100 people answering polls in a few seconds of being asked is superb. Uh, so, so thank you. Um, you've had some great questions as well. Um, we are available on uh, different different channels. Um, we even have a, a Slack channel for uh, for our, our pro web clips uh, and Angular IDE users, where you can hit, hit us up with with more questions as well. Um, but uh, certainly look forward to uh, hearing more about what products you're doing. So you know, follow us up on Twitter. Um, uh, you can access all of those accounts over at Genuatech. Um, and uh, Good luck with Angular. I hope you have a great, uh, a great experience. And uh, thank you so much for the the positive feedback and taking time on today's webinar. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.